almost forgot to turn on my mic. That would have been quite embarrassing. Alright, let's get the bot in here. Get the Twitter posted. Get the Discord posted. Alright. Hello everyone, this is Chris Ingerson, and it is December 8th, and this is the December 8th TextQuest dev stream. So, today we are taking a break from TextQuest to work on our side project, uh, and learn some more fun uh, Unity systems. So, before I start, I'm going to take a drink, because I'm a little thirsty. Mm. Alright, next... Um, today we are going to be focusing on a few things. Um, we're going to be starting off with some art. Uh, I'm going to be making a substance for the walls of the um, arcade so that we have a slightly more interesting arcade instead of just gray walls. Hi, cat. Yes, I see you. Yes, I know. You want all of the attention. Um, to give you a sense of where we are currently, as far as uh, the actual arcade goes, uh, we're pretty much in the exact same spot that we were last, uh, well, where we left off. Oops. Totally forgot. Make you go away. I should probably walk on screen. That's embarrassing. Anyway. Oh. Oh, right. So we're pretty much in the uh, same spot that you would that we were last week. Uh, so we have no light mapping set up for this. Uh, this arcade yet. Uh, that was actually going to be something I wanted to do before the stream today, but uh, didn't quite get there. However, we do have um, a couple of adjustments. I've touched up the models for the arcade cabinets, uh, and you can see now that the screens are no longer being cold behind their um, screen cover. Wow, that was interesting. Don't know what's going on there. Um, so you can clearly see the screens from wherever you are in the scene, and they're not going to be hidden in shadow anymore. Um, once we actually get light maps baked, this whole scene will look a lot better, honestly, because we're not going to have one direction light that's casting shadows from nowhere. Um, but that's not a main concern right now. So, uh, like I said, today we're going to be starting off with some substance art, uh, and then we're going to move on to probably doing some quick light map baking, um, just to make things not look horrendous. And then from there, we're going to actually handle um, transitioning into games whenever you select these. So the idea for panning between the arcade cabinets is that you would see a, a game on each one, and you could go in to uh, actually see it. Um, so that's where we are currently, and that's what we are going to kind of be messing with today. So, all right, let's go ahead and stop playing. I am going to uh, do a couple of things, actually. Oh, I don't have a start point set up, so I could probably set that up, too. Uh, actually, <laughs> open that up. Anyway, um, so while that's opening, I'm going to come over here to my substance. Uh, I started working on this before the stream. Uh, we have a basic brick template that we're using to generate bricks, um, and it's pretty much already set up. But there are a couple of niceties that I want to add. Um, I want to add support for texturing the bricks so that you can have um, a variety of different textures that you can apply here instead of just having to be smooth. Um, I'm also going to be exposing things like the number of bricks, uh, and this is just a uh, generator that's that exists within Substance natively, um, so I didn't actually make this, this is just something that uh, exists. I did tweak these values, um, but the idea is that I would probably want to expose the number of bricks that are being generated, uh, probably expose the bevel. Um, it's a little tough to see here, it's easier to see if I have some lighting. Uh, although I probably need to make it a little bit smoother for this. Um, but there is a tiny amount of bevel to these um, these bricks. You can see how it rounds out. Uh, and from there, we are going to basically expose a couple of parameters. We'll expose the colors, uh, and to start off, we're going to add some texture to these bricks um, just to make things you know, a little bit more interesting. So uh, I'm going to... If I want to actually use those, probably I can't. Uh, <clears throat> so we are going to do this. Uh, I'm going to bring this back. Uh, we're going to add a blend node. And actually, click on this because I want to see some of these transitions. Did I set this up and start? I did. 
kind of curious. Um, maybe I should do that. Oh, eh. I guess. Actually, no, we should set this to zero, and then I should just call move to target index. There we go. That way that's uh, correct whenever we start up. All right. Uh, so popping back here, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of things. Um, I'm going to set up a few maps here. So we're going to pull up some noise. Um, I'm going to say black and white spots one. Yeah, that should be pretty good for a texture. Do, 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 do. Maybe two if we want a little bit more of a concrete feel. Yeah, actually, I'm going to go with two because I like these harder edged uh, areas here. And pull that back. Uh, we're going to add a levels to this so that we can have a little bit more control over this. Make this somewhat more contrasting, um, just so that, again, we get some nice dark spots in there. Um, probably I can bring this down a little bit. Well, like that is, I guess, fine. Just a couple of tweaks to make it a little bit more contrasty. Uh, let's go for three different types. Uh, flat, textured like that, and uh, one more texture. Actually, it's probably going to be easier for me to see over here. Uh, <laughs> I really wish I could preview this in the editor, or in without dragging it in. Cells are probably going to be too complicated. <laughs> Although I could do that. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, oh, actually, you know what? I think we can do a mosaic. Right? I think this is what this is. So here is a mosaic map. Out of curiosity. No, let's make you yellow transparent. Ah. Shame. Okay. Um. Oh, that kind of makes sense, actually. I bet I bet it's expecting like an actual map, and it's going to try to mosaify it. Yeah, which is not a word, I don't think, but that would be a quite a interesting one. Uh, oh, also, we're going to be doing art and coding today. Although I guess we're doing art mostly for now, so let's go ahead and focus on that. Um, clouds might be okay. It's a little too close to the uh, dirt, so that's probably honestly enough. Um, fluid, fractal sum, I think is also going to be a little too, ah, actually I might like that one more than this. Eh, honestly, they're pretty close. Mm, I guess I'll stick with this just because it gives me better variety. Um, I just want one more. <laughs> I just don't know what to... Nope. Yeah, Gaussian I was expecting to be pretty pretty. Um, don't want to do the grunge maps. Those are two, those are bit maps. Um, Alright. Well then, I guess we're going to go ahead and add when all else fails, Crystal. I think Crystal usually has a pretty decent... Sure, that'll work. What are you doing, cat? All right, uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to get rid of the mosaic. Well, actually, you know what? I kind of like mosaic more than crystal. Just because it looks like it'll give us some interesting colors. Um, it would be interesting. And input? Oh, that's curious. What do we even do? I don't know. Okay, fine. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't think we need levels here, honestly. So we'll be fine there. Um, let's go ahead and throw on a blend node. Uh, and actually, do I have a switch? I do have a multi-switch grayscale, which is what I wanted, actually. 
So let's go ahead and add two, except I don't want that, do I? Um, <laughs> how do I want to handle this? Okay, I think I know. Um, so we're going to go ahead and plug you in, and you in, and then we're going to do Um, <laughs> actually, not sure how we want to handle this. Okay, I got you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move this up to here. We're going to do an, another blend node. Um, this is going to be our top level color. This is going to be our base. Copy this, paste this over here. I want to make this something a little more apparent here. So we're going to plug this into here. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to actually copy, not you. Um, um, well, I guess we are going to copy you, but I'm not going to make you a color. I'm going to make you a grayscale. There we go. That's better. Now we're going to say relative to parent. And we're going to go ahead and put you here. So what I'm doing is I'm setting this up in such a way that I can basically toggle between three values, um, blank, pattern one, and pattern two, and it's going to apply a color to this. So if we were to input selection two, oh right, you need to be relative to parent two for us to get that nice smattering. You can see that now our bricks have this kind of overlay texture. Uh, I'm going to make this a different color so it doesn't look like crap. Um, let's make it like blue. There we go. So you can see that it's got this nice uh, overlay texture. Or we can switch, set this back to blank where it's a solid color, with an overlay texture, and with a uh, input selection. So this is just a bunch of random stuff. But it works pretty well, actually. I kind of like it. Yes, cat. What are you doing? Let me see you. She wants all of this attention. Um, all right. So that's pretty good. I like that a lot. Um, I am going to also... Hi, cat. She's up on top of me now. I'm uh, moving this over to here. Yes, cat. I know. You want all of the attention. Uh, I am also going to go ahead and drag this out to probably about here. And then I'm going to drag these down to here because they are mostly going to be used for masking purposes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to move this down to here. And I'm going to put you right about here. Um, <laughs> trying to organize this in such a way that we don't have too much verticality. Um, and it's pretty good. All right, I think that's a pretty decent spot. So let's go ahead and revert this to one. Uh, and now we need to set up this mask to, actually, let's go ahead and for now keep it here. Uh, we need to set up this mask to support, uh, actually, no, we really don't. Um, the bricks are gonna kind of be the same either way. So cool, that's all we really needed to do. So let's, oh wait, no, that's what I needed. I needed the normal map stuff. Um, so for that, we get to have some differences. Um, we are going to do this. Do a blend node between, with this as, oh, yeah, that's right. With that as the mask and this as the black parts. <sighs> See, I don't know. Well, I guess it does bevel already. So that's probably okay, which means that I can probably just do this. The downside there is that we're not getting any of our... Um, height variance here, like I kind of set this up so that we would have different ones be 
Higher and lower. Cat, you are really making this annoying. Uh, let's see. What can I do about that? Um, if I want to preserve that, I'm going to need... <sighs> it sucks because I need to basically combine the two. Uh, which, I guess I could do that. So let's go ahead and say uh, normal. I'll plug this in right here. Here, here. I'm going to say normal blend, I think, or normal combine, probably. Yeah. So that, and then this. Oop, 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 oop. Oh my goodness, cat. <laughs> All right, sorry. I gotta get the cat off of me. Uh, okay. There we are. So this is our normal now, and if we go ahead and move this over to here. Not a lot of difference, but we do at least get some variance there. Um, although it is pretty subtle, admittedly. Like, it's really hard to tell. Uh, Alright, um, let's go ahead. Oof, I don't actually know if there's much of a need for that. I might as well just do this. Well, okay, that's what it's doing. Actually, yeah, you'll, you'll see that it's adding some subtlety to our um, interiors here. So this is the main one, this is the old one, or this is the textured one, and this is when they're combined, you can see some minor adjustments there. So yeah, we need that. Um, let's go ahead and move this here, and I think we're done. So that's basically set up. Let's go ahead and set up the um, exposed parameters, and then we should be good. So I'm going to move this to here, move you to there, move you up by one. There. Move both of you to about here. And you are pretty good. So, like I said, I'm not going to worry about doing. I could, though. <laughs> Dang it. Ah, why did I do that to myself? Okay. Um. really annoying. I was going to say, I, I could map these black spots to be metallic if I wanted to do like a base brick with a with a metal flare to it, which is a bit heavy-handed. I don't think I need that really. Oh man, I suppose I could. And it would be very fun. I... <laughs> I really don't need that. The only reason that I'm even thinking like that is because of some nice art textures where you have like a black background that's matte and a gold that's up front that's shiny, and I kind of want to do that now. <laughs> even though that's not what I would style the background as, but hey. Uh, let's see, can we do that in a very quick and easy way? Um, we would basically need to do a levels here. Kind of have just fun with substance right now. Um, I think we're going to want to crank that. Or actually, uh, we can do this. This is an old trick I learned for inverging, uh, inverting colors. Um, the downside is that's going to make all of these white, but if I crank this all the way down so that the speckles are basically the only. So something like there. See that that is coming across. Okay. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to actually overlay it with this. Um, okay. So, out of curiosity, if we end up doing this, the irony there is that it actually gives me too much on, on that. Um. Hmm. No, actually it doesn't. The white is the part that would be metallic, so um, I think that would actually work out pretty well. Uh, do I have any sort of control over this? I do 
do, actually. So a scale of 32. Okay. Uh, color source. Yeah, we'll just do random. Uh, disorder. That's all that. Um, <laughs> Okay, I think that's fine. Because I doubt I would actually make that work. All right, so let's <laughs> let's go ahead and try to get this set up in a nice way. Um, so that's all of my materials, I think. And just to be quick, I want to test these. All right. Or, ooh, no, 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 no. Um, that is not what we want to do, actually. We want to change this so that it's not a normal combined, but rather a normal blend, don't we? Because, target face, no, because uh, you'll notice that our normals down here are overlapping, which we don't want, because that should be mortar. Um, right. Hmm. Okay. Um, idea. Make a view. We'll bring this over to here. Or, I guess actually it would be bring this over to here. And the uh, white is the black. Yes, that's better. So let's go ahead and say normal color. And I think we want that to be a flat normal. I wonder if you'll give me bit better. I really wish I had a flat normal color though. Um, hmm. So something like that. Kind of. Yeah, see, that's what I'm worried about, is like it makes the... If I don't give it a color, then it seems to fill in super weird. I don't want it to combine there, though. I really do want it to get blown away. I suppose I could do this. So that we're blending. But at that point, well, it does seem to take it out, at least, so that's okay. Let's go ahead and scrub through this real quick to make sure everything looks good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that looks fine. All right. Well, then let's do that. Nope. Hello, the real Kleinba. Welcome back. How are you doing today? Uh, sure, as long as your bot doesn't do anything to body, I'm fine with it. What are you testing? Or did you just want to bring your bot along? Alright, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see. I think we want... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so I think this is pretty good. We're going to go ahead and move this back to here. Move this back to here. Try to move it forward with my view. Up to there. All right. I think we got everything, so I'm going to go ahead and move my masks back just by one. Move this into a position that's not horrendous. Move that there. 
Oh, right. This. Uh, so this is our mask. Uh, uh, <laughs> which means that we need not, now need to blend this stuff more. Uh, so I'm going to... Let's see, here's our base rough. Okay, so we basically need to do the same thing we did up here for this mask. Um, uh, right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, paste that in, and actually, do I need to do that? Um, let me check something real quick. I want to throw a blend on here and put you here as our output, and I'm going to click on you, and then I'm going to scrub back here, so you're black and white. Okay. So actually, that might be okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, it's just in RPS and commands. Oh, okay. Fair enough. You just did you just decide to make a rock a rock paper scissors bot? <laughs> All right. Um, so I need to move the masks back a little bit further, actually. three to be safe. Uh, Alright, so that means I can now move this up here, uh, and for this we are going to want to do a multi-switch, I guess. Yes. Alright, so we're going to want to scrub down to here. I'm going to go ahead and say blend. And for the sake of convenience, I'm going to go ahead and make that pretty metallic for now. So this is going to go on top. No, hold on. Um, but yeah, this is going to go here. Relative to parent, and then we need a separate map. Yeah, okay. So that's all, that's all we need. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and come up to here, paste this, and come down to here, and we're just gonna move this into that position. That should be all we needed to do. So now if I come over to here and we make this like black, we'll get splotches. And then if I come back to here and make this one, it should just be solid white. Nice. Okay. We get some splotches there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that means that's all I need to do for this. Um, so I can actually move this up to here, probably. Uh, and then I can do this basically for everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and stretch you out by one. We'll move you down to here. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to move you over to here. Go ahead and copy and paste this. We're going to put you up to here. We're going to copy and Blink, 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 and blink. All right, so now if we were to change this to be like that, you can see that we have some roughness poking through. Nice. Yeah, it was commands only at first. Learned about dictionaries, so there's an add command on my bot. That's pretty cool. So it's basically, in that case, you give it a keyword and then something that it'll say, I'm guessing? Or is that specifically looking for users in that case? All right, uh, so now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and move this back one more. Uh, and just a smidge back to right about there to give me some breathing room. Uh, and then we're going to add a little bit space between these just so that I can more comfortably frame everything. Because you know me, I'm all about framing. Move you up to here. Alright. Go ahead and hit save. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to move. I'm gonna, this is, That was the last bit I think I'm going to mess with because I don't need to get boxed into substance 
for like an hour, which I've already been doing for almost uh, 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and frame up all of our uh, color stuff. So let's go ahead and say add frame. We're going to make this color. Do, do, do. Uh, this is going to be our normals. Okay, we've got our roughness here. Okay, and then our metallic. All right. Uh, so from here. Um, we need to expose a bunch of stuff, obviously. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and expose this. Expose. This is just going to be called color. And this is going to be called accent color. Yep, that's that's accent, not ascent. And this is going to be our mortar color. Right, that's how you spell mortar there. Uh, okay, making sure that that wasn't spelled differently for bricks for some reason. Uh, let's see. It just says the string. It can be any string. <laughs> oh, interesting. So you're you're running the bot through Unity? This is going to be mortar color. Let's go ahead and grab that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to come over to here. Oh, that might be enough to honestly do that. In that case, in that case, can I get away with that? No, I can't. Okay. So these two are still needed to kind of blend together like that. So that's fine. Um, yeah, it takes about 2% CPU and 1% that's pretty cool. I didn't realize that you could have the bot running within Unity and have it respond. I guess, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, did you write your own access API to Twitch then, or did you get a plugin for that? Because I know that Twitch used to have integration code for Unity, um, but I think they stopped supporting that once Twitch was bought by Amazon and like all of those things shifted to Lumberyard, which is a bit annoying, but. Um, all right, we're going to expose this as normal format. Okay. And expose that as normal format. All right, all of that's pretty good. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and come up to here. And this is going to be our base rough. So let's go ahead and expose that as rough. Rough. And then our mortar rough. Okay. Same thing here. So we're going to say metallic. And then accent metallic. And finally, uh, mortar metallic. I don't know why I expose mortar metallic because it's never going to be metallic, but eh, I like exposing those things. Uh, let's see here. The other thing that we need to expose is going to be this. So we're going to expose this as. Um, brick type, I guess. Let's go ahead and expose.
Is that? Uh, da, 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 da. The other thing that we need to expose is up here. I really wish I had added texture to the mortar now because it's going to look perfectly smooth, but it's fine. I will not freak out about it. I promise. Um, all right. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and I think the only thing else that we really need to handle is this. Uh, so we're going to come up to here. We're going to expose this. Uh, I guess I'm going to call this brick. No, maybe I should just leave it as bricks. Honestly, um, the bevel and smoothness could probably all be like that. Yeah, we definitely want to keep ratio on there. Um, we can expose the gap. Um, I did expose this stuff, so like all of this could honestly be in there. size uh, height slope offset variation uh, let's go ahead and do height because I definitely messed with that Hit OK and offset okay so that's all exposed so that means we have some amount of control over the brickwork um, we have all the control over the colors and everything else while we're in here, so we should be good. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. Uh, let's go to our main area here, and then we're going to organize all of our stuff, and then we should be good to export it. Um, so let's go ahead and handle all of this. All right, so there's going to be um, bricks under the color. And accent under the color field. Uh, this is going to be visible if. Okay, it's like input um, brick type. Does not equal one. Awesome. Got that working. Uh, oh, that is the other thing that I need. Oh, well, no, that's fine. That's fine. I made it a slider. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and say for our color. I'm going to leave that open for now because, well, we'll just collapse it and we'll come back to it probably. This is going to be mortar under color. Uh, I got the library. Someone made a library. Can just give a client some credentials and call Connect on it. And send those credentials to somewhere spooky. <laughs> is it? I guess is it source code or is it in a DLL? If it's source code, then you could probably double check that. If it's a DLL, you could still double check that. It would just be a little more tedious to do so. That's nah, so just going to be normal format under the normal group. Uh, Boolean buttons. Uh, that's all fine. Uh, let's go. And, and so for our rough, we're going to call this bricks, the rough section. Um, this is going to be a slider. We're going to go ahead and make that point seven five. We are going to go ahead and clamp that. And then we're going to go ahead and say accent and the rough. I'm also going to go up here, copy this, collapse that. We're just going to paste that. There's no reason to show these accent fields if they are not really capable of being used, um, or if they're not going to affect anything, rather. Uh, then we're going to call this mortar. Rough. Slider. Slider. Uh, make sure that these are clamped as well. No reason not to clamp them. These are going to be bricks. Metallic. Uh, these are actually going to be zero. They're not going to be metallic at all. Um, uh, accent. 
Alec. Slider, yes. Link. Okay. Yeah, I need that. Then border. Metallic. Yes, slider. Alright. <clears throat> Um, the only other thing, uh, input selection, right. This is going to be, I'm going to call this brick type. It's going to be under the bricks section. Uh, it is going to be clamped between, so zero and three, I think. Uh, step, that's good. We are going to go ahead and clamp that. Uh, and that is what we want, correct? Yep. Okay. So next, we're going to go to, we're just going to call this bricks. Under bricks. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I am not going to clamp this one. And I guess we're going to keep it at slider. So we're starting to get into things that I'm not as comfortable with. I've never really done um, multi-slider things before, so I'm curious to see how Unity handles it. I'm willing to bet it's just going to be terrible float fields, um, but we'll find out. Bricks, or brick gaps. Bricks, or lowercase r. There we go. I'm going to keep these as sliders. Or how about just, I guess, Uh, middle size under bricks. Slider again. Uh, I'm not going to want to clamp this, I don't think. Well, actually, no, you probably need to be clamped. I mean, I'm assuming middle size probably does too, so let's go ahead and leave that as is. Uh, height, bricks. Grab. Offset, bricks. All right. So all of that is now exposed. I think we're good. So we should be able to uh, export this safely now. So let's go ahead and export this. Boom. Arcade wall. Boom. Uh, it's all good. Go to game development, Unity, Saturday Jams, Arcadia, Art, Substances. Let's take a look at this in Substance Player. Okay, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and bump this up to 1024, just because I can. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to go down to color. Nice, this is not visible. Let's go down here to brick. There is our color showing up. Uh, let's go ahead and real quick make sure that all of these go away. Nice, okay. And this allows me to do what I was saying before. So if I wanted to do something like this, I make this black. Actually, that looks pretty cool too. Um, and then I make this more of a gold. Ooh, probably I should have risen or made that right. Do I want to reverse that? Let's try it. Let's make this more like a bright gold like that. Eh, all right. So that means that my metallic stuff that I was trying to do is kind of going to just fall to the wayside, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but I guess it's not too surprising. Uh, so all of this stuff gets set up, and oof, man, it is, yeah, definitely a mess. Uh, but I could if I wanted to make this super metallic at least. But you would only be able to see that on very specific ones. splotches right there. So that's unfortunate. Um, I would probably need to redo that texture in such a way that the speckles would be more apparent. Um, I guess I can do that real quick actually. Oh, but 
should I is the question. But should I? I probably should. But then again. Alright, let's let's just try it. Um, so for this, I think what that means is I'm gonna wanna shrink this. Uh, let's go ahead real quick. I just want to get this color splash to look right. Um, so we're going to come down to here. We're going to switch our brick type to a default of 2. Okay. So I'm going to make this splash a lot more apparent, I guess. So we want to basically isolate this a lot more. So we're going to lower this. Okay, so that's almost the reverse of what I want. I actually want to raise the contrast. So probably oink, 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 oink. Okay, that's too much. That's better. So now we're just getting those sp splashes of color. Similar to the Yeah, that gets fed in there. Okay, so that's that's better. If I just raise that a little bit, so that means that I can come down to here real quick. Yeah, I pretty much wanted to do just like that. So we still get speckles. Probably raise it. Just smidge to right about there. So now we basically just have a lot less of it coming through. It's getting a little bit more of a speckle, but that's good. That's what we want. Um, that probably means I should handle tiling if this is a thing. I have scale, which is set to 1. Okay, um, tiling, uh, yeah, because I don't really have much that I need to do there. Would it be better, yeah, it'd probably be better for me to do it here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drag this out to here real quick, and then we're going to put a transform 2D on there. And that is just going to allow me to uh, basically set up some tiling. Da, 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 da. Transformation. Here we are. Tiling load. Or actually, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. I thought transformation 2D was how we did tiling. Let's see. Angle offset. Color. Hmm. Maybe not. Uh, let me think. Because I'm pretty sure if we change this to like 50, yeah, it's just. Well, no, that'll. Okay, yeah. Let's go ahead and control Z. And of course, I said I didn't want to get bogged down, so naturally I'm getting bogged down. Um, tiling. I could have sworn it was through here. Uh, problem is that this is a matrix. So I'm not sure if I can do this. Uh, I think there's a make it tile grayscale. have any sort of pattern like that. Um, yeah, it's applying some sort of offset, which is gross. Uh, so 
So I don't actually want that to be the case. Probably do that. Pattern size height. Interesting. So this is meant for seamless looping then. Uh, that's not going to work. Boo. I guess I could just hard set this and just do like 50 and 50 like that. That'll get me more tiling overall. Um, it's a smidge unfortunate. Because this is also, if we come back to the arcade wall, um, this is going to be problematic for the other one. No, oh, maybe not. All right. We'll just leave it at that. Um, that's, that's enough tiling, I think. So let's go ahead and just save this out, and then we should be good. Um, and I don't think we need to really do much there, so let's go ahead and say publish. Well, that's good enough for today. I could probably spend hours just tinkering with it, but I don't really need to. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and try and do that color that I was talking about, though. Because that's clearly what I'm on a quest for right now. Yoink. Let's see if we do black. Let's do gold. Still a bit much, in my opinion, but not the worst. So that's fine. I don't particularly care for it, but I will learn to live with it. I guess that just means that I'm not going to be doing a golden black brick style. But that's fine. All right, uh, let's go ahead and save. Come back to Unity. And then we're just going to import our substance. Um, I create folder substance, and I'm going to basically have a mirror for arcade. Cabinets. So I'll move this around for a second. Right, that's going to give us all kinds of wrong things for a while, but that's fine. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to attach our wall inputs to this. So let's do base color, multiply that by white. Uh, metallic is going to be here. And then our normal is going to go there. There we go. So that works pretty well. Good God, though, we have so many, so many bricks. Oh, but we do get the nice variation. You can kind of see it along the uh, the face. Cool. Um, it is a mite large, uh, or a mite too many bricks. I feel. Uh, so let's go ahead and. Let's go down to our substance here, and I'm going to set this up. So one, we're going to do brick type two. So you can see that we got a little bit of the color splash there. Uh, I'm just going to make my color splash. Oh, I didn't even check that. Let's. I'm curious. Did I make you zero? Cool. It does actually hide them. Hooray! Go substance team. Um, I didn't. I was half expecting it not to actually do that. Um. Next, we're going to go ahead and change this to more of a gold. I don't like how it's bleeding into there. That's kind of what we're going to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and... Nope, this is actually for a mobile game, so 512 is pretty accurate. We probably don't want to go above that. Um, <laughs> uh, we could probably change this to more of a purple or pink. Maybe...
you know, actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do what I said I wasn't gonna do, and I'm gonna make this like that, because it's not really meant to be distracting. Um, I might actually go for more of a silver now that I think about it. Yeah, but the gold does give us a nice splash of color, so let's do that. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and say that has zero roughness, and the metallic on the accent is gonna be one, so we just get a little bit of a nice metal sheen. Um, here I'm going to change this, so our brick size, we're going to try to shrink that down to 2 and 4. So now those bricks are a little bit larger. A little bit less terrible. I think we probably change our color, let's just fix most of my problems with it. Yeah, that looks a lot better. That looks decent. It's not distracting. So, cool. Uh, so we have our normals and everything else looks good. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and leave that as is. Um, I don't think we need to assign any other textures to that material, so we should be good. Let's go ahead and work on that over here. And all right, there we are. There is our awesome material. <laughs> it's been totally worth the hour that I spent working on it. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and save. Uh, now we need to handle, uh, I'm going to come over here to hit play uh, and it should start us up at the very top now instead of starting at the at the uh, uh, whichever one is active currently there we are let's go ahead and come over to here and then to here and then to here isn't that nice uh, Man, that third camera is way farther from the arcade cabinet than everything else is. All right, uh, let's go ahead and stop. Hmm. Really, now? You know, I was worried that something like that might happen. But it was interesting. Huh. What an oddity. Did you, like, switch? Nope, you're there. You should be correct, but you are not, which is very amusing to me. Let's go ahead and try reattaching that. Really, now? All right, so I need to export these. Um, let's bake textures to folder. Assets. Arcadia Core Art. I didn't put them in materials. Oh, I see. Um, let's go ahead and say new folder substance textures. Folder arcade. Let's click off and then do those. Uh, <laughs> cool, so that forced it to refresh, which is nice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and come down to here, and I'm going to assign those, because I don't want it to do that again. So I'm going to come over here to the wall, and then boom, boom, and boom. Oh, I guess we can actually make this a normal map. Alright, so now if we come up to here... All of that will be static, so I won't be able to live update anymore, but that's fine. Um, cool. So we have a new wall texture, and now we can start with our code. So I'm going to switch over. All right. So the main idea here is that you want to be able to fly up to each one of these cabinets, and then when you find one that you like, um, you would just hit a button or you would tap on it to go in, uh, and that would basically uh, start the mini game. So well, I say mini game, but it's meant to be an arcade-style game. So 
We are going to need the code for that. I'm going to collapse all of my art stuff because we're going to need it open right now. Okay. Cool. So for this, Excuse me. This is game selection. Um, let's say we'll come down to here. Um, so the first game that I was uh, wanting to do uh, this this entire project is kind of based on a concept we threw around at work, so I figured it would be fun to mess with, mess with um, is a game that's called Dwarf Man, and that's basically just a giant ripoff of Pac-Man, um, but with a dwarf instead of a puck, I guess. So we could probably set up a quick screen for that. However, I should probably instead make a core folder script here, or a core folder here. Uh, this is Folder. I will say scripts. Create folder. Runtime. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be create. Uh, let's go ahead and say folder. And then we're going to say. Um, I guess we'll call this. Ay, 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 ay. Um, I guess we'll have a UI folder. And then we're going to have create folder um, gameplay. So let's go ahead and create C sharp script that I'm going to call arcade game base. Sure. this so we can now get rid of all of these things and um, this is going to be in the Arcadia namespace and for this we're going to keep it as a mono behavior I suppose uh, we are going to want to come back here let that compile real quick and then I'm going to assign a assembly definition file because I want to enforce rigorous project structure Oh, and actually, while we're doing that, um, let's go ahead and set up some lighting. So we're going to go ahead and say this, do, 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 uh, environment, okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stick the arcade building in here, so we'll say, uh, in lighting. And I also want to say uh, props, I guess. Okay, and then we'll say here cabinets. Okay, uh, that's all pretty good. Cool. So I'm going to set the lighting to start baking while we're. Um, working on code because, well, there's no reason not to do that. Since we're not going to be using the CPU and it's progressive now, so it's not going to peg my CPU. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to try to stick in a few um, area lights. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to do three basic lights. Um, coming from the ceiling. They're not going to come from anything right now, but they will eventually. So 90. Uh, probably we could turn on per grid, turn snapping on. Okay. Probably somewhere around here. Uh, that's fine. Let's go ahead and move this up to the top here. I'm going to say area baked only. 
shape. Oh, cool. They have disks now. That's actually kind of cool. Um, we're going to do rectangles, though, uh, with a height of 2. Okay, uh, let's do a height of 10. That seems okay. We'll see if that's enough spacing. I don't want it to go the full length. I might, I might bump that up to 15. Oh, sorry, that was 10. Uh, I might bump that up to 15 height. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and I'm just going to duplicate this right over here. Nice, it does give me a projection. And then we're going to duplicate this one more time. And then we're going to turn off the directional light. And we are going to start baking our area lights. OK, color. We'll go ahead and make it a slightly warmer color, something like this. Um, intensity cast shadows, that's all good. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start baking that then. So we're just going to say subtract it. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Generate lighting. So that's going to happen while we are coding. Uh, oh man, and of course I forgot to do the big thing that I wanted to do. So we're going to come back down to here. And here, we're going to say create assembly definition. And I'm going to call this uh, sleepy owl dot arcadia. Really? It's going to take 11 minutes to bake all this, huh? Well, let's see what it looks like once it's done. Also, the wood paneling on the uh, arcade cabinet here is super dark. I feel like I need to make it way brighter than it needs to be if it's actually going to show up in an expected way. Okay, so that's going to take a second to recompile. Um, so this base, this uh, first batch of scripts is largely going to be uh, related to the core functionality that each arcade game would have. Um, and that's going to be things like start and stop, uh, and then we'll be able to basically uh, load the assets that we would need. Ideally, um, what we would start to do is as you, when you boot up a game, it would start loading in into memory all of the assets that it needs. Um, so I'm trying to think about how we could intelligently do that. Um, I was planning long term uh, of using. I was planning long term to use addressable assets. We're not going to get to that today. But that might be something we can get going next week, uh, depending on if I go down another art rabbit hole. Uh, also, I don't like that it's warning me about over. Overlapping UVs because I know that they're overlapping. I did that on purpose. <laughs> they don't. It doesn't matter if they have overlapping UVs. Oh goodness, are you so are you done compiling, or are you just gonna like keep doing that while it's baking? Or did you get stuck in a loop? I'm gonna theorize it got stuck in a loop because it shouldn't have taken that long. Come on. Oh, it's not going to let me. Really? Come on, I didn't tell you to compile anything too crazy. Okay, fine. I wonder if it just can't compile at the same time that it's baking lighting. Maybe the lighting process is throwing everything off. Hmm. I guess that's possible. Well. Um. Okay, now it's frozen. Well, I'm going to take this time to take... Oh, there was a network error. Uh, huh. 
That was weird. Oh my goodness, finally. Okay. Um, we don't need to really reference too much here, but I guess I will try to set up the assembly definitions that we'll need. Um, So for core functionality, I don't think we'll need Cinemachine. We won't need to reference Arcadia. In fact, Arcadia is going to need to reference this system, so we can't actually reference Arcadia. Uh, let's see. I think we won't necessarily need Unity 2D stuff. We will probably need addressables. Is that we're going to need in addition to that Unity.resources. Resource manager. So there's two uh, DLLs here: Unity Addressables and Unity Resource Manager. Um, you kind of need both if you're doing addressables. So obviously, dot addressables is where the main addressable code is, but addressables uses a lot of resource manager stuff. So if you're going to do anything with it, you pretty much need to also reference that. Um, let's see, what else do we need? Ooh, um, I don't think we'll need entities. Um, that's the other thing, by the way. We're going to try to make these mini games run on Unity entities, Unity CS, and uh, dots. But I don't think the core code needs that. Um, the other thing, I don't think we'll need jobs. I don't think we need mathematics. Um, we don't need platforms. We don't need Pro Builder, definitely. We definitely don't need Pro Grid. Uh, we don't need Recorder. We do want text mesh pro probably. Um, let's see, text mesh pro tests, timeline. Yeah, just to be safe. And then finally, I think that's probably all we need. Um, Probably UnityEngine.UI. Okay. I also need that at the top. I think that's all we're going to need. So let's go ahead and hit apply there. All right. So that should be everything that we need for that assembly definition file. Um, once that compiles, we'll be able to actually take a look at this. Um, also, those area lights seem to be baking pretty well. Probably I should have done different colors for them so that we could have different colors for the uh, actual actions, but we'll be fine. Uh, okay. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Arcade Game Base, assuming that I can. This is going to be a super fun thing. Um, I'm not sure if it's taking so long to compile because I'm baking a light map. I would believe that was the case. I probably should have canceled the light map, honestly. Um, all right, so we're using sleepyisle.arcadia. Uh, the Arcade Game Base. So this is meant to be the game manager, kind of, for each game. So we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need to have a public event um, system dot action. Um, hmm. What do I want to say? Uh, on game. Let's do game begin. Equals to delegate public. System dot action game end is equal to delegate. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Oh man, I'm still having network errors. Thank you, Twitch. Hmm.
This is going to be fun. So the basis for the transition that we're going to set up, wow, it keeps failing. What is up with the stream? Is that, it's not me, is it? No? We've had zero dropped frames, so I guess Twitch is just getting pegged today. Uh. Who knows? Um, let's go ahead and pop back here real quick. So the theory is that we're going to have um, an event fired when the game begins and an event fired when the game ends. Uh, and when the game ends, that event is basically fired when you back out of the game. Uh, and what we want to have happen there is a series of... Oh, man, this is going to be super nasty. Oh, can't do that today. That's going to be something cool, but we can't do it today. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know what? We might focus on some art stuff, actually, um, to make looking at the games more interesting. So for that, I'm actually going to come back to here. And I am going to, let's see, we're going to go to Art, Shaders. Um, we're going to create a shader, an unlit shader. I'm going to call this. Um, Oh, shoot. I did not want to do that. Uh, I guess I'm going to call this unlit sequence. That might be a shader file. That might not. That's not what I want, actually. Here we are, unlit graph. Um, yeah, that's what we want. So I'm going to call this uh, unlit sequence. Okay. Let's go ahead and open this up. To get this right, um, this is going to be admittedly something that I've not done too much of. So, uh, I guess. So for this, we're basically going to create, so we have a texture 2D. This is going to be our um, texture. We're going to be creating text. OK, that's all fine. Uh, it is going to be exposed, and then we're going to go ahead and add a vector 2. Uh, can I make that an int? No, but I probably can down here. Or can I only do that with vector 1s? No. Wait, you know, I thought there was a way... There it is, yeah, mode. Um... I wish I could clamp this, because that's kind of going to make... I guess I'll just make this two separate things. Um, so I'm going to call this... Um, uh, row count. It's going to be column count. I'm going to make this an integer. Also make this an integer. We'll call this column count. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and make this 
one by default, and one by default. that. Alright, uh, so we're going to need to say sample texture 2D. We're going to go ahead and say texture put this in here. Um, and for this we're basically going to want to do that. And then we need to handle so, oh wait, no, this is actually, we don't want to do this. This is the opposite of what I meant to do. Uh, this was the old way I was going to do this. I was going to make, um, basically, you could you would put in a texture and then say how many rows and columns you had for the sprite animation, and then it would play that animation on the screen. But it might, well, <laughs> no, this is, this is better for uh, the individual approach. Um, so basically, I'm going to have a hybrid approach. What we're working on now is going to be used when you're viewing the arcade machines at a distance, but then when you get up close, it's actually going to play a, uh, a kind of a tracked screen. Um, so we're going to need some UV twos. And here is where it's going to get weird, because tiling and offset, yes, that's what I want. So we can actually leave this as is. You can go here. And then I'm going to save this. And I want to sample this real quick, or I want to test it. So let's put it on this machine, I guess. I'm going to go down to props. Also, yeah, you can see, see how hard it is to see the, the wood paneling. You can see it when you've got a, gl a glint here, and when you've got some reflection. Um, but Full on, it's just too dark, way too dark. Um, in any case, let's go ahead and we're going to come to models, cabinets, core. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to say create material. And this is going to be um, screen animation. Int underscore screen animation. I'm trying to use better conventions for an asset naming too, so materials should have MAT at the front. Um, okay, so I'm going to save this asset. There we go. Uh, so for this, let's go ahead and real quick, I'm going to open up Photoshop. Also, I kind of like that substance and uh, oh, I don't need you to be open actually. Substance and um, Creative Cloud have these launchers now. It makes it a lot easier to get around. So now I don't have to clutter my taskbar with four things. I can just have uh, the main hub. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new. Uh, we'll make this like a five twelve by five twelve pixel. over here um, and I'm just gonna make, break this up into two columns of what four each um, so we're gonna want to do something like uh, let's see uh, yeah, da, 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 da. so it's 512 so that's 128 by 256 right there um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna start it Red, we'll make our way over. Kind of gradient over. As best we can. Uh, let's see. Be 
do do little bit more purpley. Cool. So we have these uh, eight screens now. Let's go ahead and real quick just add some labels. Here. Uh, I'm going to make this Commodore 64. So we're just going to say one. Oh, <laughs> you should probably be uh, white, maybe. I'm not really sure. Uh, let's go with 72 point font as well. Uh, I think it'll be fine if we make it white. Black is not as cool for text on arcade cabinets. Uh, so let's go ahead and duplicate this. Those. Just drag that down, take it out here. Five, six, seven, and eight. Cool. So now we can have the sequences, and they're pretty easy to see the number of. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this. Development, Unity, Saturday Jams, Arcadia, Art. And I'm just going to put this in here. And we'll say placeholder. This will be screen animation test. Oh, right. And then I need to actually save it out as a PNG. Um, Here, come over here, and let's see art cabinet score. I guess for now I can probably put it right here. Um, I should probably uh, let's say create folder place holder. Here. All right. Uh, so now we can come over here to map screen animation. We're going to put you here. Uh, row count and column count. All that really should mean is my tiling needs to be here like that. So I think we're going to say vector2 and we'll say properties column count Uh, that's pretty much all we really need. Let's go ahead and save that. So offset, actually this is probably the opposite of what I want. So if I set that to two, yeah. So I actually want this to be sort of the inverse of that. So we're going to want to say, um, can I just do inverse? Nope. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say a vector 1, constant, that's going to be 1. Uh, and then we're going to want to say divide, divide 1 by this, and that's going to get us this. Uh, so we're going to need to move this kind of all over the place. is going to come over to here. Okay. So let's go ahead and save asset. 
there we are. So if we make this two, nice. You can see that that's there now. Um, let's go ahead and offset is going to be interesting. Um, uh, okay. So we're going to need a vector one. And this is going to be our index. Um, it's going to be an integer, and it is not going to be exposed, actually, because it needs to be set programmatically. So from there, we probably want to have a another float value. Um, this is going to be a frame rate. Uh, we'll just do speed. I really wish you could do descriptions on these. Um, this is going to be a float. That's fine. Uh, exposed. Default is going to be one, I guess. Let's put that above there. Um, okay, so let's see. We have time. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Is that really all I have for time? Okay, gross. Uh, let's see. So this is going to be a thing. Um, So offset is going to be difficult because we want it to be based off of index, um, but the index needs to change every few every duration basically, which for now will be one second. Um, okay. Um, so I basically want to say. Can I do an if conditional? <sighs> hmm. Really? Uh, utility math is what I want, probably. Math advanced utility gate. Basic. Hey, um, properties, utility, logic. Huh. Um, okay. Okay, I think I got this. Um, so if this is equal to one. Um, but at that point, how do I do <laughs> a comparison? Um, uh, let's go ahead and say any, I guess. Nope, that's not it. Uh, utility logic not. So if not that, that's not what we want though. Um, basically what I'm trying to do is offload this calculation to the GPU because there's no reason for the CPU to have to do this. Um, but I need to figure out how to do this. Um, so we're doing sign time, which I guess actually should be here. Uh, so if that's if the sign time is one, 
then we want to iterate the index basically. Um, Actually, we're going to go ahead and say multiply speed. So if that. I'm pretty sure. No, that's not what we. Well. Sign time. Um. Go ahead and crank this up to two. No, that's not actually what we want to do. Okay, we're gonna do point five. Yeah, this is just dampening that, which is not good enough. Um, I need to actually change the speed of it. Uh, so that multiplier is not correct. Instead, what we need to do is say um, Oh, okay, I, I think I know what I, what we can do here. Um, so we're gonna say, get rid of you. Uh, let's get rid of you. Uh, we want the delta time instead. So we're going to say uh, add because we're going to need that. So we're going to make a vector. This is going to be uh, time it's not exposed. So we're going to add delta time to time. Okay. And then we're going to say if that is equal to or greater than or equal to 1, then we're going to say subtract this. Ah, geez, this is, this is the kind of problems that I have with node logic. I'm thinking left to right, but I actually need to be thinking right to left because it all executes based on connection to this. Um, so what I want to do is say all, no, or, nope. Um, So we are going to say if, but that's not a thing. Um, can I do then? Can't do logic check, utility logic, uh, and any branch, I guess. There we go. That's what, God, what terrible name for my case. Um, so if that is the case, then we are going to use that. Otherwise, we are going to use this. OK. Um, and that means we need to actually assign. Can we do that? Set. Um, property. Hmm. I'm actually going to look that up real quick. I there has to be some way of doing that, right? Uh, Unity substance. I'm not substance. Pfft, shader graph. Set property. There we go. I don't want to do that. Um. I don't want to do that either. 
Uh, set property in shader. You are really killing me. Is there really not a way for me to do that? Um, Um, that seems highly unlikely. Uh, graph, perhaps? I don't want to set it from code, though. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is all code. This is a C sharp, which is not what I want. Ah, oh, man, it's the opposite of blueprints in Unreal, where I can only ever find solutions to Unreal problems in blueprints. I can't find the one node-based system in Unity. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're killing me. Okay. Um. Let's see. Surely there is a way to do this. Input. Nope. Nope. Procedural. Nope. Nope. Properties. Because <laughs> I'm. Hmm. Suppose that would work. Hey. Well, um, okay. Uh, I guess what we would do here is say modulo. This is going to be our thing we're, that we're moduloing. And then from there, we are basically going to say multiply these two values together to get our total number. Oops. So these two will give us our total area, modulo that. And that should give us our remainder, which is the index. So in that case, we don't even need index, basically. Uh, so that's fine, I think. No, it's not. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um hmm. okay. Thinking, 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 thinking. Um, okay. Uh, gross. So basically, <laughs> I avoided it by one step. Um, so we are going to modulo, and we're going to need our index, which I guess means that I can just do... Um, that and then I think what we want to do is uh, we don't want to actually do it that way though um, so let's do another branch so if this I don't like that this is here because I don't really know what to do I don't know how to reset this timer. So we're going to say another branch, and we would basically say if this is the case, then we're going to do index. We're going to do that, or we're going to do index plus one. Oh man, but I don't think I can actually directly set that. Which means that there's no point. 
again, that, that brings us back to our problem. Um, really though, there's like no way to set this? Let's do... Yeah, I don't really know what to do there. Um, I suppose I could just divide it by the actual total time and just do a modulo that way. That would just be really gross. Um, but I guess it could work. So essentially, let's get rid of... Um, I guess all we would do is, can I do a round? Uh, okay. So we're going to say round this, and then that same modulo. Uh, where did you go? Here, there we go. You still. Do this, I think. Modulo those things. That should give us our index, essentially, and then we can use that as our offset, which is a bit awkward. But um, okay, so from there, that is a lot more streamlined, and that does make things a lot easier for us. Um, if that works, that is. So we're gonna put these things all the way over here. Um, okay. So from there, that gets us our index, and we need to basically iterate through offsets based on that index. So that means we have to do the reverse. We're basically working from a flattened array. So I always forget the math for that. I think it's something like x modulo y, and then x divide or y divided by x. I think. Um, Uh, let's see. I, again, I always forget how to do this, even though I've done it at least a dozen times by now. Um, the index is basically... Uh, let's go ahead and pull this over here. Uh, let's see. So that, that is flattening it, but it's not giving me the index that I want. Okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Not what I want. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yes, this is what I want. Um. <laughs> well, that's not helping me at all. Uh, cool, so I'm going to have to do this from memory, probably. Um, let's see here. So I think we want to basically say... Uh, buh, 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 buh. It's going to be equal to... Well, first up, we're going to need to make a vector 2. And it's going to be equal to the number of rows. So there's going to be row count. Oh, I guess I probably already have that up here, didn't I? Yep. No reason to have it be scattered. And we can just reuse it. Uh, so we're going to need that modulo index, basically. So this should give me my x value and then divide I think gives me my y value um, so let's go ahead and test that I might be I might have that backwards um, but we have a column count let's go ahead and say we have a row count of two and a column count of one um, 
we're on the first index, which is zero. Um, so zero modulo, or I guess that's uh, one. Nope, that's two. Modulo zero, which is zero. Um, if we go up to one, that becomes one, which is not correct. So if we flip that and we're moduloing the index, so index, so that'd be zero mod two is zero. Uh, one mod one is also zero. So I think that's more correct. Let's go ahead and flip this. Um, and then divide, we are at, so you'll, uh, I guess we'll do two to make that also simple. Um, so that'd be two divided by zero, which we can't do, which means that we should never have modulo be bottom one actually, which automatically means that we have to do that first. So you should come down to here. Um, so that'd be zero divided by three, which is zero. I'm sorry, zero divided by two, which is zero. One divided by two, which is 0.5. It's clearly not correct because that's gonna move me down. Um, <laughs> Darn it. Um, uh, okay, well, we're going to have to kind of speed things up because it's almost, I have some conflicts coming up soon. So let's go ahead and get that offset. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the X value, it is iterating, but it's not, it's doing it like wholesale. Um, but that is good, because it means I can probably get rid of these. Uh, instead, I can just move these back. That's making that a lot easier. Um, and you know what, we can live with a two iteration one until I can remember how to actually properly do a flattened array index. Quite embarrassing of me, admittedly, that I can't do it off the top of my head. Because, again, I've done it dozens of times now. Uh, back. Okay. So that's more or less doing what I want. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, I don't even think we're using index anymore. Uh, or time. So we can get rid of those two things. Yep, cool. Uh, speed is still not, speed needs to be taken into account, but it is not right now. So for now I can delete these. Speed, speed, what to do about you. Um, hmm. I don't want to just do time times two, but I guess that could work. Um, uh, Cause over time, that's just gonna make things worse. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, you know what? I bet time is probably a normalized value if they're smart. So let's go ahead and say multiply. Um, let's just try this real quick. Oops. Here, put you there. Save that. Yep, cool. So that works pretty well. Um, so if we wanted to uh, have that set up on our individual machines, we could. <sighs> Running low on time out how to do this. I always forget how to do this properly. Um, I might have these flipped. Maybe I need y to be modulo and x is divided. Um, it would still give me the same result. Uh, let's go ahead and say mm. this is all PHP which I don't want. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> let's do 2D array index value. Mm, actually, that might have been a bit too much. Uh, I'm not crazy about that because that's just a for loop. Um, there is a smart way to do this, and I swear I'm going to remember it one day. Hmm. Problem is that I also forget how I set this up and what I even set it up for, so I don't even remember how I can get back to it. Um, index um, calculation, I guess. Let's do flatten. Calculation. This might help me. Um, let's see about it. Because it's always far more simple than I think it is. I always think it's going to be this complicated thing that involves like dozens of modulos, but it's only like one modulo and one divide, I thought. So distressing that I keep finding 3D examples, but not 1D, or not 2D. This should also, in theory, work. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Index divided by height, and then index minus width times height. Maybe that's what it is. Um, so index divided by height. Let's try that. So that's going to be... So this needs to flip. Divided. So this is going to be this divided by width. Wait, no. This is the width index, so it's actually divided by height, which is the column count. Let's see what that does. Okay, so we're coming out a little close, um, and then index minus width, oh, index minus width index, cool, um, times height. So that's some, so that would be this. Try that. Ah! It's not quite what I need. Um, darn it. Well, hmm. boo. Uh, that's going to drive me insane. So I'm probably going to end the stream here uh, and then I will. this screen animation on there, which I know isn't great, but it'll, you know, function for now. So, a little disappointing, but we do have it animating. I just need to remember how to 
do that calculation. Uh, okay. Ah. So, plus our arcade is looking a little bit better. Um, although, interestingly enough, it doesn't seem to be casting shadows very well on the... Well, that's fine. Oh, and you can actually see the wood now, so that's better. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and call it a day there. Um, we have some nice new materials on our arcade walls. Uh, we have actual lighting baked, and we have some shader graphs started, uh, but... Definitely, we need some mathematical work done there. Uh, so, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a day that... Wow, how far back is my... Uh, let's see. Okay. So... Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good place to stop for the day. Um, the next steps are going to be... Well, one, I'm going to try to finish this shader up today and then probably post about it a little bit later. Um, and then from there, I will be able to uh, move on to actual cool title screen stuff. Um, but probably what we'll want to do is set up a game template um, so that we have a sort of root, uh, core code base that we can expect all games to execute in some fashion. Uh, and then from there, we'll be able to um, basically make it so that you can select a game to play it. Um, so that's th those are the next kind of couple of steps that we need to do. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave it off on there. Uh, and yeah. So oh, this is going to be a very fun project. A lot of learning is going to go on here. Um, I am going to warn in advance that because I'm going to be learning stuff on the fly, there will definitely be periods like this uh, where I try to do stuff and I just can't quite get it to work because I don't remember how to do it um, or I don't know how to do it outright. And that's going to be a little frustrating to watch, I'm sure. Uh, but bear with me. It's going to be a good learning experience, I think, for everyone, uh, in particular me. <laughs> but for now, I think that's a pretty good place to stop. So as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.